Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome to the channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm a short, overweight, middle-aged black dude. I've got thinning brown hair, black glasses. I'm wearing a black t-shirt and I'm sitting in my office with three colored lights behind me. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about what probably a lot of people are talking about at the moment is that Tesla very kindly or very evilly, we'll discuss that in a bit, has given pretty much everyone in Australia with a Model 3 or Model Y and I, I think the Model X OS, I'm not quite sure, but everyone definitely with a Model 3 and a Model Y has given us enhanced autopilot for 30 days for free, which is great. Um, it was a bit of a shock to me because I came to my car and saw this notification which said, oh, autopilot's been activated. So I thought, oh my God, what, what did I do? Did I, oh, did I just pay for it? And I quickly went into the app and was like, no, I haven't paid for it. And quickly went on some forums and realized that a lot of other people had gotten this and I'd missed one screen which said this, which was, you know, complimentary trial, 30 days of enhanced autopilot. You now have navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, auto park summon and smart summon, which is pretty darn cool. And in this video, I'd like to cover some of those features. We're going to have a look at auto lane change, uh, navigate on auto, uh, summon and smart summon. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about a few of these things. So, um, Effectively, the way that uh, auto lane change works is that when you're on autopilot, you can flick the indicator and the car will automatically change lanes for you. And the advantage there, for me at least, is that you know when you're normally driving on autopilot and you want to change lanes, you change lanes, it turns off autopilot, you get into the other lane, you turn autopilot back on. So with this way, it just does it for you, which is nice. And it actually works really, really well. Um, the next one is navigate on autopilot which means if you're on one highway and you've got to go from one highway to another highway autopilot will just change lanes and go to the other highway for you which is pretty amazing it'll also take the off ramp that you need to navigate off of so it will automatically indicate and go across to that lane and and yeah it's pretty pretty cool um now with all of these things as usual you can leave them on or you can leave them off um with summon what's really nice so some basically means you've got a forward and a back arrow in the tesla app and you can move the car backwards and forwards where this is handy is if you've got a particularly tight garage or maybe um you've got you know you've parked somewhere and a couple of people have parked on either side of you and now it's difficult to get in the car you can have the car just come out of the parking spot for you which is pretty cool uh smart summon as the name would suggest means the car will actually come to you now <coughs> let's first go and look at how these functions look in the menu settings and what options you have to um customize them and so on and then we'll have a look at the actual options uh, the actual functions sort of acting out as they normally would now <coughs> i will say one final thing i think tesla is very very clever and slightly evil because by giving everyone 30 days trial of enhanced autopilot, uh, you know, it's pretty cool for all of us, but I'd imagine for Tesla, it doesn't really cost them anything. They basically just flick a switch and it turns on for everyone because it's just software. But after that 30 days, there's going to be a lot of people who may not have been thinking of paying the $5,100 for auto enhanced autopilot or people who are thinking about it and going, ah, I can't really justify it. But once they use it for a month, I think Tesla's going to end up with a lot of people buying this that weren't planning on buying it um, a couple of days ago. So let's let's have a look at how all this works. Let's have a quick look at the settings of all this enhanced autopilot stuff and see what options we have in there. So if we go into our car button on the bottom right hand corner and then go up to autopilot, um, you'll see now that navigate at autopilot, full self driving visualization and summon is all available to you. Now also make sure that you're in the right profile. So at the moment I'm in easy entry, but I've already done this for my profile. Um, auto steer is what we all have anyway. Navigate on autopilot is one of the new ones that is available for all of us who've got this f one month free and you go to customize and with this you can set it to either be switched on by default at the start of every trip you can then set the speed the speed based lane changes so you can tap on the eye and that'll give you a little bit more information about what it does but basically what it means is if you've got it set to disabled it won't be switched on at all mild is in theory it should change lanes as gently as possible average is somewhere in the middle and mad max is you know pretty pretty zippy in terms of changing lanes um, you can also exit passing lanes i have no idea what that means but i'm gonna say yes for that um, require lane change confirmation so again um, you can have this happen automatically but i definitely prefer 
being a little bit more in control. And so if you tap on that I, it'll tell you that by default, navigate on autopilot requires the driver to confirm automatically initial name changes. Now you can choose to disable it, um, but yeah, they do actually have it on by default. So I actually think that's definitely the way to go. Um, yeah, you probably don't want it. Well, look, up to you, uh, but I like just having that, you know, it's not going to do it unless I ask it to do it. Um, and lane change notification, um, not sure why that's grayed out. Um, so autopilot can notify you when my steering wheel, okay, so either the, the steering wheel will play a chime or it'll um, uh, vibrate. Um, and for some reason it's grayed out, don't know why. So that's navigate on autopilot. Now let's have a look at the options that you have in the summon customization stuff. So if we go into there, you can set your bumper clearance so it won't get more than 50 centimeters away from something. As soon as it senses that there's something 50 centimeters away, it'll stop. You can set the summon distance to 10 meters. I'm not quite sure what that means, whether you have to be within 10 meters of it or, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that does. And you can only set that to a maximum of 12. So I'm guessing you can't be more than 12 meters away from the vehicle. Um, or it'll only go, no, I think what this means is that it'll only go 12 meters and it won't go further than that. And you can set that to a maximum of 12 and a minimum of three. So it'll either just go three meters away from its current location. And I actually, you know what, I actually think this is good because visually it shows you, okay, you can go seven meters. So it'll go seven meters from there to there. So actually, yeah, that's good. So actually, let me just set that to 10, why not? Um, side clearance, you can set it to standard or to tight, so it'll be a bit more um, adventurous with how close or far it gets from things. And also requiring continuous press. So that means when you push the button to make this happen in the phone app, you have to keep pushing the button for it to keep moving. And as soon as you release the button, the car will stop moving. You can just tap on that and it'll give you a little bit um, more information with that. Um, of how that works. Now, one little thing here, this setting does not apply to Smart Summon. So Smart Summon requires a continuous press of the button to operate that. And that's pretty much um, all the settings that you need to know about setting um, all the new stuff in Enhanced Autopilot. There is also Auto Parking, but I haven't quite worked out where or how that is. So I might do that at another time. The last thing I'm going to show you, and this was how I knew that it was unfortunately only temporary, is that if you go into software and scroll down, um, you'll see there that enhanced autopilot and expires there on January 22nd. So boo, we don't get it for very long, but um, great that we've got it anyway. So now let's um, actually get going back in the car and see how this all works. Autopilot while navigating, which is what I'm going to show you now, which means that when you have navigation on and you turn autopilot on and there's a change that you need to make. So, for example, let's say you want to go from one highway to another highway, the autopilot will change lanes for you and do that for you, which is pretty darn cool. Um, pretty darn scary as well. I'm, I'm not sure how confident I am to do that, but we'll, we'll give it a go. The other thing is that you do get auto lane change, which I actually think is probably better than the navigate thing. Um, so how that works is just when you've got sort of normal standard autopilot on and you can indicate and the car will then change lanes for you. Now you can set it up that it will do that automatically. So it will detect when a car is going too slow, well not to the full speed limit in front of you, and it will sort of automatically do the whole thing. Um, but I don't trust the car to do that. So I'd rather flick my indicator up and I will confirm that I want to do that. So the way that you know that you've got um, the navigator on autopilot active on your vehicle is that when you've got navigation on, you'll have this little icon here in blue, which means it's it's now active as it were. <coughs> so we're just gonna turn onto the highway and I will turn autopilot on. We'll see how this works. Now I believe I can actually turn it on before I even get on the highway and it will, you know, merge and all that sort of stuff for me. But every video that I've seen online of it seems to be that it, when it merges, it, it's quite keen to merge, so it merges probably a bit quicker than I would. So I'm perfectly happy to not have it do that. Um, and since this is my actual car and i really rather not have it happen, ah, let's try it. Yeah. So if I turn on autopilot now, 
and bump it up to a hundred. Oh, I'm just going to hang on. Let me just do this manually to get into one lane and get up to a hundred. And we'll turn on autopilot once we get on here. So if I had autopilot on now, it would automatically merge for me. So it would do the indicating and it would go over across to that lane. But let's turn autopilot on. So double tap on the stalk. And <coughs> visually, the other way that you know um, that you've got the um, navigate on is normally with autopilot, you would have two blue lines on the outside of your vehicle. Whereas now when you've got navigate on autopilot, you've got the single blue line on your vehicle. And I'll show you how the, the, the indicating and the changing lanes works. So if I just indicate, it will say apply a little bit of, you know, whatever to the uh, steering wheel and it just automatically does that. And I'm just going to go back into that lane. And now obviously it's checking to see if, you know, there's vehicles around and it'll adjust and so on. And now this car's going, is it typical? Like I want there to be a car, oh, stay in your lane, buddy. Let's get, come on, over to the right, over to the right, over, come on, over to that one. Anyway. Is it typical? Like, I want someone to go slow in front of me for a change. Um, and yeah, watch, now no one's going to go slow in front of me. But what I have done is I've set the navigation to get off of the highway in 3.8 kilometers. So in theory, when it comes to getting off the highway, the autopilot will automatically do that for us. So I'm going to deliberately stay in the middle lane here and see what happens in 3.4 kilometers. And considering that we're doing 100 Ks, it won't take us long to get there. So let's see what happens. So we got 1.2 kilometers until the turn off. I'm very anxiously keeping my hands on the steering wheel just to make sure that I can um, take control if I need to, because I, I am a bit nervous about this. By the way, I've, I've just checked this beforehand. If you do want to turn everything off, just as usual for autopilot, you flick up the right-hand stalk, the, your gear stalk, and that turns everything off and you're you know, back in manual control of the vehicle. So now we should be over in the left-hand lane. We are now in the left-hand lane. And the car is, well, no, we're slowing down because the car in front of us was going a bit slow. And... The car is indicating it has asked me to apply pressure and it is turning off of the highway and slowing down and it's switched back to standard autopilot. Um, so visually that's good because it gives you the blue, the two blue lines on the outside to let you know, hey, um, you know, you're not, you're not in, in, in navigate for pilot anymore. And now it is, it's, it's still doing all of this. Okay. So I'm going to take over because um and now so that was pretty much navigate on autopilot i'm just gonna get onto this road here um to show you how the changing lanes bit works because and i'm just going to end the navigation because you can actually still get the car to make lane changes for you um even just on sort of surface roads. So we're now just on a standard, you know, um, 80 kilometer two lane road. So if I now turn autopilot back on, and if I indicate over into the right hand lane and apply a bit of pressure, it changes lanes for me. And it's got a cool animation, show, shows you that you're changing lanes and it's doing the whole thing. and. Let me just go back, back down to 80 and let's see, do we have any vehicles on our side? No, we don't. So I'm actually just going to wait until we've just sort of um, got this vehicle on our left a bit because I want to see what it does when I tell it to change lanes when there's a car sort of right in the way. Come on, slow down a bit, dude. Come on. Just while we're waiting to catch up to this car, um, I do also want to point something out, something maybe I didn't notice it before, but I'm pretty sure that before this was activated, we didn't see traffic lights in the visualizations, whereas now, as you can see, we do see traffic lights in the visualization. So now I'm going to indicate, and there we go, it's shown me that there's a car in there, 
and it's going to wait and it's going to slow down and it's just done that all automatically which is pretty cool cool so that was navigate on autopilot now let's have a look at how summon works so now let's have a look at how this feature actually works. I'm in the Tesla app on my phone, and you'll notice that I now have a summon function in there, which I didn't have before. I tap on the summon function. It then shows me where the car is, which is the red arrow, and it shows me where I am, which is the blue dot. And you can then tap and hold on the arrows to move your vehicle. So the first one I'm going to do is going to have the car reverse a bit. And you tap and hold. Now, I've got it set to where I have to keep holding moving by itself. That's really cool, isn't it? Now, I thought it might freak people out if they just saw the car moving on its own. And as soon as I lift my finger, the car stops and it says stopping. And I'm then just gonna make it go back into that parking lot by going forwards. And forward it goes. Now, I thought some people might be a bit freaked out if they just saw the car driving by itself. So I put a mini me in there to help alleviate any concerns the public may have. It's actually turning the steering wheel. That's pretty darn cool. Now, I've tried this come to me function like three or four times and I've never gotten it to work. So hopefully it's gonna work this time. So you can either make the car come to you by using a target or saying come to me. So to adjust the target, just move the map to place the target on where you want the car to go but I'm going to have the car come to me. So if you go to the top right hand corner in the app, you see where the target symbol is. Beneath that is a little person. And if you change that, the move to target changes to a come to me. So I tap on come to me and the car's going to work out where I am in relation to it using, I assume magic. And there we go. It's got the line there. So if I go and hold the come to me button, the car should now come to me. That's really cool. It's turning by itself and it's coming to me. Oh my God, this is... I'm over here, I'm over here. Oh my goodness. So it's gonna, I mean, it could have just turned. I don't know why I did that whole... It turns the wheel a lot. How cool is that? Well, so that is Summon and Smart Summon in the Tesla Model Y. For all of you who have got Tesla Model Ys and Tesla Model 3s and any other vehicle that was given, I presume the Xs and the Ss may have gotten this or maybe they came with it, I don't know. Um, yeah, enjoy the end of December and the beginning of January to play with all this stuff. Right, well that was Summon, and those were the features that I'm going to look at in this video on Enhanced Autopilot. I might have a look at Auto Park another time, I just, I just, I'm too flat out to, to get around to doing that at the moment. Um, if you have liked this video, please like and subscribe. If you have subscribed already, thank you so much for your support, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, enjoy Enhanced Autopilot, and please let me know in the comments how, how's it all going for you, and if you've been brave enough to try some of those things, or if you've been anxious, or it's, it's too much, or it's not enough, and... Yeah, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, we'll catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving. Catch you on the next one. Safe and happy driving. Two of us are going to go home now. Catch you. Damaged. As always, thank you for watching. Um, oh, sorry, that's Bjorn's line. I shouldn't have said that. 